In this lesson, we're going to talk about tibbles. In the last lesson, we talked about data frames, and a tibble is a special type of data frame. And a tibble comes from the package tibble. So the first thing I'm going to do here is load up this tibble package. And then I'm going to assign the iris data frame. Remember, we had a sample data frame named iris of flower specifications. And I'm going to assign that iris data frame here to a new variable, a new data frame, df, and view that df data frame. And you see what happens when I print that df variable is I get all 150 rows dumped into the console. And now I'm going to take that same iris data set, exact same one, iris right here, and I'm going to convert that to a tibble. So this function as underscore tibble is coming from this tibble package here. And when I convert my iris data frame to a tibble and then print it, watch what happens. I get this instead of 150 rows dumped to the console, I just get this little summary. I get 10 rows and then it's telling me, oh, there's a 140 more rows in this data frame and I can use this print function to see all the rows if I want. It's telling me that there's five columns with 150 rows and that this is a table. So I get this nice summary subset of the data frame sent to the console instead of the entire 150 rows. And this is the main feature of a tibble. And the reason I'm talking about this is because tibbles are frequently used in R, especially in Tidyverse, to hold data. A tibble is nothing more than a special type of data frame that has these kind of nice features added to it. And if I look at the class, this class function in R tells you what kind of a thing it is. If I run this class function on my data frame variable, you can see what I get is data.frame. That is the class of a data frame or all data frames. And if I run, however, the class function on my tibble variable, what you see is that data frame class is returned, but then these two additional classes, tbl underscore df and tbl. So a tibble, as I said a moment ago, is a special type of data frame, and that's reflected even in this class list here. So your data frame is still there, but it has these other things added onto the top of it. And that's all a tibble is. And there's one more difference that's worth noting here. If you remember when we subset that data frame down to a single cell, what it returned was a vector, single value of the data in that cell. So this is actually came back as a vector. But what happens with a tibble is when you use the single subset brackets, even down on the individual cell level, that tibble will always return a complete tibble. So what I have here is still one row, one column, but this thing that is returned is um, still a table uh, instead of an individual vector value. If I want the individual vector value out of that tibble, what I actually have to do is use double brackets. So double bracket syntax on a tibble gives you the individual value and the single bracket syntax on a tibble still returns a tibble. So that's the other key difference between tibbles and data frames. The key points from this lesson that Tidyverse is a family of packages developed by RStudio, and that family of packages frequently uses a tibble 
which is an enhanced data frame. And tibbles have nicer printing when you print things to the console. And when you subset a tibble using single subset brackets, it will always return a tibble. If you want an individual data value, you use double subset brackets. What I suggest you do next is create some tibbles from a sample data set. You can use that as underscore tibble function and you can print that tibble to the console and see what it looks like. You can practice subsetting the tibble. It's almost the same as a data frame, just those few little differences that I pointed out. But tibbles get used a lot in R, and I wanted to mention these things because you will encounter them.